Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin here, here to make a review for Space Sheriff Galvan, the first ever Metal Hero show within the tokusatsu genre. So yes, um, what's this about? In the vast regions of space, criminal aliens run a lurk. To combat them, based out of Planet Bird, yeah, strange planet name by the way, is an intergalactic space force. Now the Maku, one of these high-profile organized crime syndicates, had their eyes set on Earth. To fight this threat is none other than Arizona Maricopa County Sheriff himself, Joe Arpaio. And helping him is Steven Seagal. Alright, obviously kidding. But then, they sent one of their best officers, Space Sheriff Galvan, and him, his commanding officer's daughter Mimi to fight them. On Earth, Galvan assumes the name Ichi Joji Detsu and finds work at a horse ranch and drives a red Suzuki Jeep. And whenever a monster appears, Gyavan will be there to fight. A majority of the episodes are episodic. There are only a small number of two-parters, and whenever Gyavan suits up, each episode will take the time to explain to viewers how the transformation process works, under the assumption each episode is likely to have a new viewer. But if you intend to watch this from beginning to end, um, the repeated explanations of how it takes 0.05 seconds to transform and how he gets the energy from his spaceship um, is going to probably drive you insane to some extent. Another plot hole is how Galvan gets from point A to point B to, let's say, save a hostage. Instead of using that spaceship, um, he uses his jeep to get there. Unless he wants to keep the spaceship concealed at all costs and not make a panic, I guess that is understandable, but desperate times call for desperate measure measures, and just using the spaceship could save more time and maybe gas money? I don't know. Or maybe it was just a cheap trick just to get parents to buy that Suzuki Jeep at the time. And having Gyavon exposed to nature and children gets the viewer believing that he cares about life and why he values his job as a space sheriff. He's very kind, childish, but because he skips his day job to fight threats. It makes his boss and co-workers upset a lot, and he tends to lose pay. The only development he has is mostly with his relationship with Mimi, which is rather minimally mandatory just to ease attention within the course of the show, um, you know, about the romantic feelings. Sometime before the start of the series, Galvan was already a police officer and is aware of his duties. At times, he does show emotional attachment to what he does and why he does it. The passion Galvan has um, is enough to bind to his character, so don't expect to be very character-driven or really expect a character's journey ultimately finding his or herself because more or less Galvan knows who he is and what he does. He never feels um, that he wants to quit his job or that the system sucks and, you know, whatever doesn't kill him, he will work hard and make sure it doesn't happen again. It is mostly a story-driven show and a few episodes borrow some material from Japanese mythology like the, like the Kappa. And it was done in a very comedic way. I mean, the series does use comedy very well. <clears throat> the Maku work more or less as standardized villains. They are pretty generic and their goals of intergalactic conquest will be done again in other um, future and past Tokusatsu series. But at times, Galvan will fight two monsters um, at an episode from time to time to show that, hey, um, they are taking their plan seriously and they really want to take out Galvan, who's just one man. At times, you will see them abuse children and animals, but as politically incorrect as it sounds, um, the way it's choreographed and filmed just makes it hilarious to me as opposed to disturbing, and I guess the fact that I laughed at those things does make it disturbing to see if that at all qualifies. But I also felt the last three episodes were relatively forced, and um, it does set up Shadivan, the second Space Sheriff show, intentionally to demonstrate that the Space Sheriff series will continue. And, um, but speak... But still, um, there will be um, cameos from previous Sentai and Kamen Rider series. And, uh, for example, Soga Machiko, the actress who would play um, Bandora and Jew Ranger, whose character would become Reader Repulsa in Power Rangers, guest stars as a monster of the week, and um, she sports an afro, and she could very well pass as the Japanese version of Diana Ross. Another future Jew Ranger actor is Tatara Jun, um, as Gavon's boss at the horse ranch. He would later play Barza, the basis of Zordon. Even though this series was 10 years before Juranger, Tatara Jun and Soga Machiko still look the same. And Miyuchi Hiroshi, who played Kamen Rider V3 and Shinmei Akira and Go Ranger, has a cameo um, in two episodes of the series. I won't say a cameo, but he is um, extensively featured. 
And Amamoto Hideo, the actor who played the iconic Dr. Shinigami in Kamen Rider, also plays a Monster of the Week. But one of the most surprising cameos to me was Princess Tenko. Yes, that magician. And Saban made a cartoon of her in the 90s called uh, Princess Tenko and the Guardians of those of the Magic. And like the, I remember the toys, like remember those spinning fairies things? Yeah, that was also Princess Tenko as well. But still, Princess Tenko, the young Princess Tenko, who's like now like, I don't know, 60? Um, like, she's in her early 20s, and damn, she was a fine woman when she was young. She was really, really hot. But ultimately, oh, but Kenji does have a good enough screen presence to carry the show, and, and I really enjoyed it. So I'll now elaborate on the action. So I'll leave the story and characters at a 7 out of 10. The thing about action in Tokusatsu is, yes, normally it's a group of, like, let's say, small people, like um, Sentai series or one person, like a common writer prior to this, fighting multiple opponents. Usually, like, let's say the heroes will just stay in the middle, and then the bad guys come, and they just, like, fight them. But um, what I really liked about the action, especially with Galvan doing the fight scenes out of costume, is that when he's surrounded, he'll fight in a way where he's trying to find openings and keep moving. It's like he's piercing through a fortress and finding a target as opposed to having the target come to him. I feel there's more of a forward movement in the action as opposed to, um, you know, a central movement. I feel, um, you know, just that, you know, I won't say central, but, you know, a staying center kind of feel. I feel he is fighting like a police officer, a soldier, where he eliminates, you know, targets one by one and um, as opposed to just waiting, you know, as they come to him. I feel that there's also more of an external objective in the fight scenes as well. The way he moves feels like a park, you know, feels a lot like those parkour videos with the high and long jumping and using the environment to his advantage. Prior to doing this show, Oba Kenji was already a, um, an accomplished stuntman, vet, uh, stuntman doing stunt work in the original Kamen Rider and Go Ranger shows and was already in um, Sentai series such as Battle Fever J and Denji Man. I heard that in those shows, Battle Fever J and Deji Man specifically, he did all of his stunts in and out of costume, but I heard for Gyavon they did use a, um, a suit actor. As Gyavon, his fighting style does feel different as it's more grounded and more power-based, while without it, his fighting style is more on speed and agility. Um, what I thought was highly underutilized was that the monsters could also grow into giants, and Gyavon was also use you know, a dragon robot called Doi, which is part of his ship, to fight them. But Gyavon would also still find a way to take out the monster with just his sword, which I thought was also fucking cool. I just wish we had a bit more, you know, those giant battles. But I suppose limiting that feature does make it more distinctive than Super Sentai. Yes, the word, um, with the word Metal Hero, naturally, um, this was the series that started it all. It would also spoof the show Metalder and um, Spielvon, which would also be the basis of the sh uh, VR Troopers. Um, also, the director of the original Robocop also used the design of Galvan as an influence of designing Robocop as well. I thought the design of Galvan Su was pretty cool in distinguishing itself from other tokusatsu genres like Sentai, Kamen Rider, and Ultraman. It does feel more external as opposed to, you know, Kamen Rider, which is kind of more of an internal thing. You also see from inside the helmet from time to time and how it can be used in searching, um, infrared, seeing through invisibility, and it has just more powers than just being for show. So ultimately, I'll leave the action at an 8.5 out of 10. The opening theme by Kushida Akito has a good mix of disco beats and Japanese male voice singing. Not exactly the traditional Enka, but um, it does make a good combination. The song is pretty much about Gavan and the theme of old school Japanese masculinity. The general soundtrack is also very disco, bringing in the co this kind of cosmic atmosphere. It sets the mood in the way it needs to, and it really drags you in with how the care of the series is in a very good way. And for that, I give the music a 9 out of 10. Well, this was <clears throat> um, a, an experimental series to make a new section of Tokusatsu. Naturally, it has its, its um, flaws, but you do realize that there is growth for improvement if given that opportunity to expand, which it did anyway. In a way, I compare this series to, let's say, Jew Ranger, though a Sentai series, but was also um, an experimental um, show. As I said, Oba Kenji has a great presence in this series, and he really ca um, carries it. And I mean that in a good way, by no means <coughs> trying to say anything bad about the supporting cast. I say, if you really want to get into Metal Heroes, maybe you can start with this series. And regardless of its quality compared to its improved successors, 
I still love this series enough for an 8.1 out of 10 and look forward to my review of its, um, of its successor, immediate sequel, Space Sheriff Shadivan.